So I'm going to be walking you through making a custom connection element and we'll be using this truss, specifically this joint down the bottom where we'll be joining these three members to this base beam. While modeling a lot of this geometry, I'm probably going to just skip through it because it's not necessary for you to see how to model it. It's more important about the actual definition of the components for the connection element itself. And now that we're finishing up the base extrude of a half inch, we can start to work on the layout for the hole pattern that we'll be using for uh, you can use either bolts or rivets, whichever construction method you prefer. Save this part now to a new directory that we're going to create for our custom connection elements. So now that we have that saved, we can actually go in and turn this into a connection element. On our Structure Systems tab, we can use Define Connection Element, where we will basically define the mating planes and geometry that we want to use to locate this to our structure system once we actually get this into the model. And we also will be selecting the feature propagation that we're going to want to pass through to our structure system as well. In this case, we have our holes that we want to pass through. And so that we can edit this thing in any truss or structure system, we can create a dimension group and we can tie in these dimensions that we just named so that we can access and edit those when we place this in a structure system. And we can add our file location for our structure system connection element, which is all the way at the bottom. Add our directory, which is going to be the custom connection elements. And now we should be ready to insert our new connection element by switching over to plates. And we can start selecting the faces to mate this and because our central beam is centered on its sketch line we can use that for our tertiary reference point and for our cut scope we can grab these three members and we just wanted to cut through the webbing on the one side or the flange on the one side and we can accept that now if we go in and measure the actual angle of our truss members, we'll see that it isn't actually 45 degrees the way it was designed in the structure element. So we can copy this. We can come back into here. And because we associated these dimensions with the structure element, we can then paste that in there. And you can see the model updates you can accept that, hide this, and rotate around and see that all of the holes have propagated through. So now we have our structure element in place. And that is it to create your own custom structure element that can be used in multiple structure systems.